Asta, asta e un clip eu Of the Diamond of oh, Pride. Good morning again, and welcome to the Elmhurst Seventh Day Adventist Church Community Lifestyle Center. I hope that you had enjoying the beautiful weather outside. It's a little bit cold, but it's sunny. Sun is the best thing for your body if you can get out and get a good night's sleep without any light of anything like this, and then uh, eat the right food. And uh, there are many other things. But we are so glad that you're here with us. My name is John Pirovsky. As you can hear, I do speak with the accent. I'm the local pastor, but I love doing this because I believe that uh, uh, our bodies are extremely important to function and to do well uh, mentally and also physically. Uh, let me just tell you a little bit about the facility all the signs with the exit, those are our emergency exits. Also, if you need a restroom, they're located here through this door. And the first on the right is ladies' restroom, and the second on the right is men's restroom. So, also, I just wanted to let you know that we are, as a Seventh-day Adventist, we are a Christian church. I respect all of your beliefs. As I always say, we are here to share a common thing together. We also believe that Christ came uh, to redeem our uh, body, soul, and spirit. So body is also extremely important. So I'm going to have an opening prayer with you. And I said, I respect your beliefs, but since you are here, let us respect each other. We always give glory to God, and we are thankful for the life and for everything that he provides for us. Dear Heavenly Father, tell, thank you so much that we are here today, that uh, we can spend some time to learn about healthy lifestyle, what is good for our body. I'm thankful for every person that is present here, that you protected them to come here that you're sustaining our lives, and that you know since you created us what is the best for us, Lord. And I pray that by our own choices that we can determine what we are going to do and how we are going to take care of our bodies. Let this time be to the glory of your name and for the blessings and for the goodness of all of us present here. Thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, uh, I think that each uh, presenter is going to introduce him or herself when they come here to present, but I'm going to introduce to you Dr. Ray Bishevats. Uh, he's my friend, but I would like to tell you also a little bit about him. He's going to have a short presentation at the beginning, and then we will go to the food demonstration. Dr. Ray Bishevas is board certified in anti-aging, regenerative, and functional medicine, and is a fellow of the American Academy of Anti-Aging and Regenerative Medicine. Dr. Ray has 
amassed extensive knowledge over the course of his 30 years of clinical experience. In addition to functional medicine, his wide-ranging educational background includes psychology, philosophy, theology, journalism, music, track and field, sports science, what else? <laughs> Uh, an art of teaching adults. Dr. Ray, a unique approach to understanding the many health challenges seen in his cl clinic and by the many practitioners whom he counsels. I just want to let you know also that recently he was counseling 300 physicians about the functional medicine. We are so glad that he's here with us and he's going to present about the subject. Enjoy. Good morning, I love this crowd. You come here for good food, enjoyment, visual, it's amazing. And I just finished uh, one lecture on cardiology just a month ago, and as I finished this, I was thinking, how do I present this in church? Because this is complex, you know, there were a lot of doctors, but there was something about cruciferous vegetables that was bugging me. I said, how do I present this to church? And just three days ago, I was not following all the current events, they said, oh, we have a cooking class of cruciferous vegetables. Really? If that's not God's hand, I don't know what it is. So I'm going to give you maybe 1% of what we talked about in cardiology just a few weeks ago. And uh, it's really stunning. And I'm so excited what we discovered last few years in, in cardiology. And I'm going to share with you just a few tidbits. And hopefully you're going to enjoy this very short journey here in about 10 minutes or so. So uh, disclaimer, this is not meant as a medical advice to consult your doctor. This is not... A relationship between us on a professional level, we are just uh, presenting this as information. Uh, causation, this is a big word. Do you know what is number one killer in the world? Hmm? Which disease? Heart disease, cardiovascular, right? What is number two killer in the world? Cancer, really, officially, right? And uh, we have, in, especially in America, I love this country, but there are a lot of stuff that is not always the best. We have all these mass killings, all this cra crazy stuff going on. In the world, we have crazy stuff going on. And all of the pales in comparison to cardiovascular disease. Every other person will die for cardiovascular disease, right? So if this is number one killer, wouldn't you like to know who is number one culprit? Have you ever read or watched the movies Who Done It? You know, detective novels, and we have to go. Albert Hitchcock movies were popular, and I know I was a kid, maybe 12 years old, when I watched one of those, and you're living in suspense, what's gonna happen, and who really did it? Huh? My God, yeah. And you never know who did it, and by, by the time you find, especially teenagers, they're obsessed with suspense, the suspense, right? And we found, oh, that's the killer, not the other one, right? So what is number one results you like to know when you go to a doctor's office? What is my? Cholesterol. Cholesterol. Why? Everybody, you're hardly waiting to go to the doctor's office to ask what is your cholesterol, right? So we think the cholesterol is number one killer. What if you're wrong? And I'm going to tell you how this is connected to Christopher's vegetables today, right? What if you're wrong on this? So we have watched this cool down the movies probably many times. Causation is a big word, and we say cholesterol is the problem. But do you know the most recent study, 19 cohort studies, this is the most comprehensive study that can be done in the world, over 68,000 people showed that the more cholesterol you have, specifically LDL, the longer you're going to live. Wow. <gasps> Who is then right? This is completely flying opposite in the face of what we talk about knowledge. 68,000 people, the more LDL you have, the longer you're going to live. Hmm, are you scratching your head as I was? Then, 75% people hospitalized for heart attack had normal or low cholesterol. Hmm, so what if LDL is not a problem? And then, why don't we find who is number one killer in a whodunit novel? This is just a tiny introduction we're going to have in church, much less, a bigger lecture probably, but an hour about this, whenever we arrange, maybe in April or May, uh, and find the right solution. So today we'll be talking about solution partially. So. Is this cot causing the collapse roof? <laughs> oh, maybe, yeah. Correlation. A lot of these scientific studies says, oh, by correlation, we came to this conclusion. Poor cat. She's so cute, right? But she did not cause collapse, collapse roof. If you have a new nonstick pen and eggs are not sticking and eventually becomes really old, 
Are eggs the problem? Are you going to throw the eggs away and say, hmm, these eggs are bad, bad eggs, bad eggs? Or do you think the pen is the problem, right? This is what old letter versus new letter looks like. This is what our face starts looking like as we get aged, right? Doesn't look like age 15, but by the time you get 70, 80, 90, 100, I don't know, depends how, what the lifestyle, it's not gonna look smooth and nice, right? So what makes the difference? Again, this is super, super short stuff what we discussed in a much larger lecture. So I'm gonna talk today, again, very summarized, about three things, who done it? Who is the real culprit behind number one killer in the world? There are three things. One is structural damage. In other words, the same way you have structural damage that you see here, you see this, this leather is damaged, right? And the other one is very smooth. So you have a structural damage, and whatever you see in your face, look at your face and be honest. Do you look like a 15 years old? If you're 15, you probably do. But if you're 30, 40, 50, and we vary in amount of wrinkles. We all like to be vain and to look younger than we are, but be honest and see if you have any wrinkles. Whatever wrinkles you have in your face, you have it inside your body in the arteries as well. Your arterial vessels become damaged because the, the collagen elastin is a structure of your whole body, including arteries and veins including capillaries, or your capillaries actually go first. So if these arteries are getting damaged, body's trying to fix that. So cholesterol is actually not a problem. Cholesterol is just a repair mechanism. If you have a project to, to fix something at home and you have a glue that doesn't work, you go and get a better glue. So we have a cholesterol is a good glue, but we have something else that is a better glue, which is called the, the uh, apple B. So we have three things we're gonna look briefly today. Again, very briefly, structural damage, nitric oxide, and glycobiology, and glycocalyx, and I will tell you how this is connected with broccoli. Very, very soon. Uh, so this is what cholesterol particle looks like. Cholesterol and LDL are not the same. This stuff in the orangish color, that's pinkish color, that's chole chole uh, actual cholesterol embedded. And this here is a little bit wider structure, and this stuff in blue, this is ApoB. And the modern science says, oh, it's not cholesterol, it's actually ApoB. No, it's just a better glue. It's all embedded in this protein molecule carrying stuff, right? And uh, vitamin C is number one thing that is essential for collagen production. Eat cruci cruciferous vegetables, fr fruits, vegetables, whatever. I suggest take extra vitamin C. Every single mammal in the world, other than humans, produce vitamin C in the body. Goats, sheep, dolphins, cows produce vitamin C in the body. We had ability thousands of years ago, and we lost it. That's again for another lecture. So you need extra vitamin C for structure. Uh, then uh, for structure, you need bioflavonoids. You need bioflavonols. Just pay attention to this study later at home at your leisure. But also, you need the sulfur components. Look at the bottom, sulfur components like MSM, and sulfur components like cruciferous vegetables. So one of the greatest things that is missing in the modern diet, and I'm so glad you're here today, is sulfur. And the richest components in food that have sulfur are eggs and cruciferous vegetables. They have a lot of it. I was pure vegetarian for 17 years. I'm still mostly plant-based, occasionally eat some meat, but still mostly plant-based diet. And uh, my mission is to teach people how to be better vegetarian. The number one thing missing in the vegetarian diet are sulfur foods. And that's connected with your brain, connected with your liver, with your kidneys. None of these organs can function properly without sulfur, right? So sulfur is a big deal. Sulfur is a big deal for structure and for the something called nitric oxide. Do you see cholesterol embedded here in atherosclerosis? Ask yourself a question. Why is the cholesterol not further down but just the exact spot? So cholesterol, there is a fiber damage collagen damage, and cholesterol goes there just to fix the problem. It's just a repair mechanism. Do you see the problem? So you're not a cardiologist, but you understand this. Cholesterol would not be there, and it's not there at a 15-year-old because there is no damage. So it goes there as a repair mechanism. So MSM is a substance that I like to use a lot. Uh, there is sulfur components. And then nitric oxide also depends on sulfur components to be produced. Nitric oxide is a signaling molecule. Your vasodilation depends on this proper blood pressure. It's connected with diabetes, hypertension, cognitive decline, Alzheimer's. So it's a very important substance, right? And I spoke in church re recently, even briefer, about nitric oxide. You know what is the solution? Mouth, keep your mouth clean. Do not use antiseptic mouthwash, use only natural herbal ones. Do not use flora toothpaste, just a natural toothpaste, but also do a lot of humming. When you drive your car, it's boring anyway, hum the whole day. 
It's going to make you happy and produce a lot of nitric oxide. Just hum the whole day. Humming, because of the nasal sin sinus vibrations, produces a lot of nitric oxide. It's stunning and cheap. There's no medicine cost to this, right? <laughs> to hum the whole day. More oral microbiome, and there's some special probiotics. Uh, look online, there's some oral probiotics. You need to have oral probiotics used regularly because m your mouth also has a good bacteria and bad bacteria. So a nitric oxide solution is this. Nitric oxide half-life is only 1.8 milliseconds. What extends it is sulfur components, including cruciferous vegetables, things like coenzyme Q10, and acetylcysteine, taurine, you know, MSM. These things extend uh, uh, lifespan into hours, from 1.8 milliseconds into hours. And then there are certain glyconutrients. So this is what your arteries look like inside. Do you see how there's this hair-like substance? The same way that we men have hair, you know, arms. So your arteries inside have these hairy-like substances. They're called glycocalyx. So this stuff gets damaged first, before body invites cholesterol to try to fix stuff, right? So this glycocalyx net network depends on glyconutrients to function properly, right? And uh, we have three types of sugars, simple sugar, more complex sugar, and very complex polysaccharides that are found in mushrooms, certain barks of certain trees, and cruciferous vegetables. So this is what your cells look like, and we know about this, uh, uh, let me see, uh, what am I doing here? Uh, so do you see this stuff on the top that is kind of uh, orangish, reddish? That's glycolipids, so these are glyconutrients. This is what protects your arteries from damage, this is protecting your, every single cell from damage, and this is number one protector against cancer as well. It's not a cure for cancer, it's a protector for cancer to, to get started in the first place. And this is not just view of what, what artery look like, and you see these tiny hair-like substances there as well. So what is the solution? Again, this is, I'm making short, I'm almost done here, we're gonna talk about cruciferous vegetables. We need to have a, a lot of vitamin C for structure, a lot of, look at home a little bit more about these polyphenolic compounds, bioflavonols, bioflavonoids, and a lot of sulfur. Every single healing spa in the world any country, they smell like rotten eggs because there is a lot of sulfur. If sulfur helps you on the outside, it's gonna help you on the inside. And cruciferous vegetables is God's given gift that is loaded with sulfurous components. And this is number one protector for all kinds of diseases. So what are the top uh, 12 I'm gonna to mention today? We have a beetroot, red spinach, arugula. I cannot read everything from here, <laughs> is it there? Uh, Swiss chard, green spinach, kale, mustard greens, rubber, and I'm, I'm sure I didn't mention something else. And finally, this is my grand conclusion for the lecture that should be five hours, we're gonna make it in 10 minutes, and which is gratitude. You know, the greatest thing, uh, Dr. Pastor Pirosh mentioned wisely, uh, our church really doesn't, uh, it's not a judgmental church, we, we, we accept everybody, we love everybody, I, we respect whatever faith you come from. But Whatever faith you come from, you would probably agree with me that gratitude is a top sign, tip of the iceberg, if you're really living with God, right? So the number one prayer, when I start praying in the morning, I always start with gratitude. Forget what you don't have. Start with what you have, right? It changes your perspective. So the number one thing for, for immune system and cardio cardiology is gratitude, humor, sunlight, movement, sleep, community. All these six blue zones, they have community. And this is community. We're trying to establish community here to, to get together once a month, whatever, to talk about good food uh, and healthy eating and drinking. So cheers to your healthy eating and drinking today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ray, for that really informative uh, presentation on cruciferous vegetables. Uh, my name is David. I'm part of the um, health and ministries, uh, the, the health ministries here at Elmhurst Church. And I just wanted to mention two things before we get started. Number one is um, in your event schedule, we're going to do a little bit different order. We're going to do the uh, smoothie first, then the uh, ceviche, the soup, and the pan, and then the pancit. And then um, for each person who comes up, if you have questions, if you could save those until the end of their presentation, that would be great. And uh, if you have questions for Dr. Ray, um, we can do that also at the end of the whole presentation. And he'll be here if you need to talk to him too. So thank you very much. And so let's, uh, we can start. Um, Randa? Do I just, oh, hey. <laughs> Good morning, guys. 
Happy Sunday. Thanks, thanks everybody for making it out today. Uh, mine will, my presentation will be uh, quite less professional than that. I'll just let you know right now. Um, today I'm going to be making a cruciferous vegetable smoothie. Um, I'm sure we're all pretty familiar with smoothies at this point in our lives, but uh, I'm going to go over a little bit and try not to bore you of some of the nutrition benefits and minerals that um, you can get from and as these vegetables work together. Um, and praise God for the variety that he gives us, the colors, the vibrancy, the, the, the flavors. Um, I'm going to start with, well, first of all, a lot of people, um, I'm sure you guys know this, but it's before as you get your produce and you bring it home, the very first thing I do, I, I sometimes spend a whole day doing, I'll go grocery shopping and then I'll wash all my produce. Uh, you can get different different stuff. I get this stuff, uh, the fruit and vegetable wash from Trader Joe's. I know some people, sometimes I soak my produce in apple cider vinegar or baking soda. Um, I've heard that together, that's not very good, but separately they could be beneficial. Even if it is organic, you want to get the pesticides and whatever. You think about how many hands have touched this apple alone, you know, where it's been transferred. So always watch your produce when you, when you bring it home. Um, so I'm going to start with kale. Um, most of you guys are probably used to this kind of kale, the standard kale, but I'm, I decided to try something different today. Um, this is, they call it dinosaur kale or uh, lacinato, I think you pronounce it. Um, I find that it has a slight, I forget there's a camera here too. I find that it has a, a slight less bitterness and also a little bit more... Um, uh, better to eat raw, I find. A uh, little bit of nuttier taste. So if you guys look at the recipe on the back of your page, I'm actually going to double, about double the recipe because I'm making enough for, for everybody here. Um, so I'm going to do about, this is, it's pretty hearty. So I think I'm going to do about like four stalks here of this. Just cram it in here. Um, so with this, um, there's so many vitamins here. And overall, this smoothie has a lot of uh, vitamin K, C, um, it's uh, immune health. And I'm so glad that Dr. Ray mentioned, um, you know, the cells. The, the, your cellular health is the, the, the root of all diseases and non-diseases. You treat your cells and you give them life. This is, this is, this is, this is life here. Would you, you know, there's not a lot, of, there's, you probably spend more energy digesting this, celery specifically, but it's way better to eat something like that rather than like a, a Cheeto or something that's, it's not alive. Those kinds of food are dead food and our bodies don't even know what to do with it. Um, there's one thing about the kale and spe specifically, uh, I've heard back and forth things and Dr. Ray, you can expound upon this, but there's something in kale specifically. It's something called oxalates. I'm sure you guys have heard of that before. Um, it, it can be detrimental in a way. So some people it's, it might be, be beneficial if you have, you're prone to, uh, kidney stones or, um, uh, let's see, certain, certain, um, I think, oh, IBS, irritable bowel, irritable bowel syndrome. It could cause um, calcification. It actually binds with calcium and causes chrysalis in your joints and your muscles and your nervous system. So if that's not an issue to you, it's really not that big of a deal because you're weighing out the benefit of the nu nutritional value as opposed to oxalates. So that's kind of, you know, consult your doctor, you know, kind of a thing. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is cut up some parsley here. Uh, this is a massive antioxidant. It is antibacterial, anti-diabetic. Uh, it is, it also protects your kidneys. So this is a very kidney beneficial and digestive beneficial smoothie here. Um, so we're just going to throw just a good hearty bunch. The, the, the favorite thing that I love about smoothies is there's no, there's no direct science to it. You just, if, and if it's too bitter because you're working with a lot of greens, you could always add, you know, honey at the end to kind of sweeten it up and, and balance that. Uh, the parsley here, high in zinc, vitamin A, vitamin C, of course, boosts the immune system, antimicrobial. Uh, it, there's something that's really cool about it. Um, it's a diuretic, which means it helps your body get rid of fluids and 
toxins in your body, so it helps with UTIs, uh, high blood pressure. One really cool thing, um, a lot of people here at the church are vegetarian and or vegan, um, so it's really really beneficial for people who have symptoms of anemia because it's high in iron and folic acid, both, double whammy. So it helps, that being said, it helps with um, white blood cells um, that move the oxygen throughout the body as well as the development of cells, which ultimately is amazing. Uh, it manages diabetes, blood pressure, strengthens the immune system, promotes collagen, like he had talked about before, and helps with eye and vision. Um, ne next thing we're going to do is a little bit of lemon. Again, I'm going to be doubling the recipe, so I'm going to use a whole lemon. Um, I know a lot of people like those squeezers, but I feel like you can't get all of the pulp out of the out of the lemon. So I prefer like these kinds of things. It really really get in there and get everything. Yes, you get more seeds, but you get more of the lemon, less waste, you know? It's, it's worth it. Uh, high in vitamin C and flavonoids, which are basically antioxidants, which help your cells. Like he said, collagen uh, benefit and growth. Um, all of these are just disease pre preventatives. Diabetes, cancer, you know, these are just gonna help any symptoms you're having, help uh, stop the the growth of bad cells. Um, I don't know if you guys, how many of you guys are familiar with um, candida? Show of hands. Heard about candida? So it's like cancer. Candida survives off of sugar, and if you stop eating processed sugars, it has nothing to feed off of. And this is a this smoothie is a great way to kind of combat that and kill. Um, Later on, I'll be talking about ginger. It actually kills not only E. coli, but candida bacteria that is growing in your stomach. And there's so many things that that causes in your body. Um, thrush, um, scalp issues, gut issues, and your gut is your immune system. It is so important. Um, so with the lemon, um, again, iron and vitamin C, that helps you absorb Iron and vitamin C together are better for absorbing iron into your body. I found that out. I was like, yes. <laughs> um, and this is crazy, but um, you think lemon is like the most acidic thing, but once it metabolizes in your body, it actually alkalizes, which is incredible. The the ability that has God has given us to be able to do that. We are a, a system. Um, it also helps prevent kidney stones, which is pretty cool. Um, next we'll do here is a celery. Again, doubling. I'm gonna do about four or five-ish here. Um, let's see. High in A, vitamin A, K, C, potassium, folate, um, with minerals like magnesium, iron, and sodium. This can help lower your blood pressure. And let's see, it re this is cool. It relaxes your muscles and increases blood flow. Um, it decreases the, the sign of ulcers and any pains that you are having with, with such. Um, oh, and another reason why I waited to, well, obviously to, sh to show you guys, but celery in particular, you want to wait to chop it because certain vegetables, the sooner you chop it, the sooner the nutrients start to be released. So use it as you, you know, chop it as you use it. Don't, it's easier said than done because sometimes you just want to prep everything, but you may be losing the mineral value and the nutritional value in the foods that you're eating. Um, and, and also, a lot of people think, oh, you know, when it comes to broccoli or kale, you notice I didn't take out the stems, and even the leaves of the celery are beneficial. There's a lot of vitamins in there that you would be missing. Same thing with like broccoli stems. There's really fun ways, if you cut it the right way and saute it, there's really fun ways to prepare that kind of stuff. And why waste it? It's, it, that's uh, most of the nutrition of, of the plant. Um, so yeah, like I said, uh, ginger, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, so good, so delicious. Uh, reduce, we know this, reduces nausea, um, helps fight the flu, common cold, 
Um, and it has an ability to aid in weight loss, which is pretty cool. Um, like I yes. And then, so green apple. Again, this is gonna be pretty stuffed. I'm gonna throw in one for now. And uh, originally the recipe only had green apple, but with all these greens, you kind of want to balance it out with a pretty sweet fruit. So I picked kind of some of the sweetest and most beneficial apple and pineapple. Um, green apple, obviously high in fiber, again, helps with digest digestion and helps with the detoxing process, um, aids your liver in that way also. High in calcium which I think is interesting. Um, slow in aging and re reduces bags under your eyes. And then lastly, pineapple. I could have gotten fresh pineapple, but I decided to do frozen. Um, sometimes it's nice to get the, you know, a little bit of fresh and frozen, especially if you're making it on the spot and you want it to be cold. You could always put in ice, but it, it makes it easier, the prep time, but also cools it up a little bit. Um, this pineapple accelerates wound healing, immunity, um, good source of bromelain, um, an enzyme with anti-inflammatory properties, a uh, good source of vitamin B9, which I thought was cool, fights fatigue, and the enzymes that are present um, can enrich hair follicles, which, how cool is that? Um, yes, yeah, so... Um, all of these things help, like I said, digestion, immunity, your eye health, everything in your body works together and it starts with your digestive system. You feed your gut, you feed the rest of your body, right? That's where, that's your, they call it your second brain for a reason. That's where health comes from. Feed, food is medicine and God has given us a, a really beautiful array of fruits and vegetables that we can play with. What a blessing. Um, you know, I will wait on this. This, yeah, um, I won't even try to put this on right now. This thing sounds like a mini aircraft going off and I'm not gonna do that to you guys, but you guys will have a chance to try this at the end. Um, and I can't wait. It is, you know, for like I said, you could always add honey, some kind of sweetener so that you can you know, play with it. There's, there's no rules to smoothies, right? You could always add more water. You can always add more sweetener. There's so many recipes and you can have so much fun with it. I just wanted to leave you off with one scripture. Uh, so whatever you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. First Corinthians 10 31. I, I hope that you guys learned a little bit of something from this. God bless you, and thank you. Is it off? Oh, any questions? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, twice? It says twice on there? Okay. So... Again, like I said, there's like no real rules to smoothies. You can have it as thick or as thin as you want. You know, you could always add water to it. And um, another thing too is you could make like a good bad. This is a lot, obviously, you know, probably be for a family or something. Um, you can always put it in the fridge. I don't recommend, I mean, you can do that, obviously, have it for the week. Like I said, the nutritional value might not be the same, but at least it's better than a Red Bull. <laughs> so, you know, grabbing a Red Bull out of the fridge or something. So, so yeah, uh, you could play with it. There's the, it's, it's a loose recipe. You can kind of take away, add things, you know, that you find beneficial. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just so crammed can, right now. Can you please repeat yeah. the question from the online audience? Oh, yeah. Repeat, what repeat the question. Oh, oh yes. Uh, the first question? She, she asked how much water to add to the recipe. I said, you know, it's pretty loose, you know, uh, for that. And then, yes? I was, I was wondering, like, uh, what I said, like, if you could, like, or, like, if the time would be added. Yes, yes. I just put so much in here that it's, like, really full. But the pineapple absolutely will be added. I think once, um, I didn't even add the water, but once you fill it and blend it, you'll have more room. It's just 
super compact at, at this moment. Yes, <laughs> but it's packed with nutrition, so that's what matters. Yeah, anybody else have any questions? No? It's, it's straightforward, smoothies. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Absolutely. I'll just... Is it on? There we go. Hello, everybody. My name is Veronica, and this is my son, Enoch. He is my sous chef. <laughs> um, today we'll be making ceviche, a uh, fish ceviche. Um, this dish comes from Mexico, usually made with either shrimp or fish tilapia. Um, the way that I make it is with cauliflower because it gives it the same texture of a cooked shrimp or fish, as, uh, um, as I said. And the secret ingredient to give it the fish flavor is gonna be seaweed. So we'll get started on the cauliflower. Um, what I do with the cauliflower is I, you know, I set a big pot, water, boil the water until it's bubbling. Um, you shut that off or lower it. You can put your cauliflower in, su um, submerge it into the water and let it blanch for about five minutes. Um, once that is done, you take it out, drain it, let it cool, and you can put it under running cold water to, let, to stop the cooking process. And then um, I have my tomato here, my salt. What you can do is start peeling the cucumber. And this is so simple that he knows how to make it himself. So. <laughs> Um, what we can do is to start chopping up the cauliflower. You can put it in a food processor to make things go faster, but the texture just isn't the same. So I like to cut the florets. Um, you can cut them you know, straight down this way or just cut the, all the florets off. It's a big, tedious chopping process, and I think that's what takes up most of the time. Um, so... Although it is a fun dish to make, it takes some preparation. So I don't know if they'll see it here, but you know, just chop it all up into tiny little pieces as much as you can, have fun with it. You can chop it as many different ways as you would like. Um, and what I would like to say about this dish is that maybe some of you are familiar with this dish because I make it for our international food festival here. So if you ever stop by the Mexico booth, this will be there. Now you all know how to make it if you're feel like making it during the summertime. It's a very, very good, fresh, cold dish to enjoy on those hot summer days. Um, and as you know, we've heard all the health benefits of the cauliflower and tomato and onion, so I don't know if I need to repeat any of that, but it is really good and rich in vitamins and minerals. Um, the seaweed is what gives it all of those, the good B12 that a lot of vegetarian and vegan um, people do need. So if you enjoy the taste of seaweed, add it in there. That will definitely help you. Uh, let me take this out. 
We'll just start throwing that into your bowl. And then once you start having like all the cauliflower in there, you can probably chop half of it and just chop half of that cucumber. So just cut it in half and you can cut it. And of course I brought my kid-friendly knives for him. Although I do trust them with this one, just as a precaution, we're gonna use the, the safe cutters here. Um, what else? We like to uh, add all the cauliflower in there. And there's no right or wrong order to it. Just chop it all up and add it in there. Um, we like to serve it on our tostadas. Um, so once it's all done, we add it on there. You can add um, hot sauce or salsa, whatever flavors or spices you like. Um, what else can I say about this dish? Um, I guess as long as it's cold, you can keep it in there for about a week. Yeah, because I mean, if, if, if you keep it in the back of the fridge, nice and cold, it will, it will last. And then the lemon kind of keeps it pretty intact. So, because we're going to be adding a lot of lime in there. So you can use lime or lemon, the yellow lemons. Um, I think in one of those, I, I, I mixed that, our, the one that I prepared yesterday, I used a little bit of lime and lemon. Um, salt to taste. Everything is to your taste and to your liking. Um, yeah, there's not, there's not much to it. Um, not too crunchy. You don't want it raw because um, it won't, it won't, um, if anyone has eaten shrimp or fish, like, the te like a rougher, like a squishier, yeah. Um, so you do kind of want it to be, um, yeah, a little squishy, kind of. You blanch it for five minutes. Yeah, you don't want to overcook it because then it gets too soft and too soggy. So you still want a little bit of the crunch, but not too crunchy where it's too raw and it won't soak up all the good stuff too. Yeah, you 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 run to you let it cool. Um, I take it straight out of the pot, you know, with my uh, tongs, um, and you put it in a colander. Just let it run under the the cold water to stop the cooking process because you don't want it to overcook. Um, and then you can um, add all of your other ingredients here. The red onion is a little bit easier on the palate. Um, that one I like to eat a little easier, like raw. And the boys enjoy it, they don't complain about it. <laughs> and of course we all know that this is, you know, it has a lot of the good nutrients for our immune system, the vitamin C's and um, as well as the tomatoes. So there's a lot of citrus in here that will help um, combat, you know, those, the sniffles and all that that we put in our teas. Um, and I'm saying um too much. <laughs> and then, so just cut that down the middle like that. Yeah. And here's one thing I like about my cilantro. I know you see it in a little cup here. I like to keep it in a cup with water and you cover it with a bag and it lasts much longer in your fridge that way. And you can add, again, as much cilantro as you want. All of this, the recipe does have a certain amount of ingredients in the, the, the measurements, but this is to your taste. You can play, it, or play around with it as much as you'd like. Um, there was one recipe that I saw that also added carrots in there. Um, so you can play around with this and the flavors as much as you would like. And this is what makes it even better that it's according to your family's palates as well. So we'll add a couple of onions in there. While he's working on the cucumber, I'll cut up the tomato. The easy way to dice the tomato, just cut some slits right across. Across the other way. And this is a 
a time saver. A little spicier. You could add jalapenos, or if you wanted even spicier, some serrano peppers. Okay. Um, you could slice that. You could you could dice that up and leave it on the side if you're using it for a family party or something. Um, when we eat it, I know we have tahin or Valentina, which I did not bring it up, but you can put a little bit of hot sauce on it when you serve your plates. And we also like to eat it with a side of um, rice, um, the, the Mexican or Spanish rice, whichever one you prefer as well. If there are any questions, just raise your hand. Just saying so that. Yes, feel free to ask questions as I chop and prepare because there's, I mean, you've got all the good information from Randa and from um, Mr. Bisovec. So thank you for all that good info. All right, let me get some cilantro here. We'll get that going. And of course, I like, to, I like to use the stems in my cilantro. I don't waste any of it because cilantro is really good. So we just chop that all up. And this is where I feel like a really cool chef, like I know what I'm doing. All right. Throw all that in there too. Yes. So once I'm done, yeah, so she asked, um, when do I add the nori, the seaweed? You can add that at any point in, in, in your making process. Um, I usually kind of save that for less just because it, I have to rip it all up. You could put it in a little mini food processor um, that will also ch um, chop it up easily for you. Um, mine doesn't do it for me the way that I liked it to. That's why I didn't bring it, but... I usually just rip it up in tiny pieces or I use my kitchen shears and just chop it into tiny little pieces. So um, that can go in at any point you would like. Um, so we'll do this. We'll cut a couple limes for you here. And I do have the lemon squeezer because it's easier for me. <laughs> so for this one, we can use about half a cup or um, of lime juice. I know in almost every Mexican home, there's one of these, so it's in my home. <laughs> uh, all right. And again, there's no, no set order of how to put everything in here, but I usually do wait for the end to put the salt in there just to kind of uh, let the lime cook up and marinate. So I do, I do make this and let it marinate for about at least half an hour in the fridge before we serve it, so that it, it can all soak up the lime, the lime in there and the flavors. Um, and while it's marinating in there, I do go in there once in a while and stir it up just to make sure that it all gets the flavors and, and all the good stuff in there. Throw the lime in there. Yep, that should be okay. Well, you can, ch you, yeah, that's fine. You can, here, grab this, and you can chop it in there. You can make these chunks as big as you like, as small as you like. I like to make them really, really small um, for the sake of the show for today. We're gonna leave it like that. Um, we'll get our nori, and I know there's different types of seaweed as well. Um, but I always get the, the nori. And you want to rip that up into tiny pieces? Tiny, tiny pieces. So just rip it, rip it, rip it. And again, if you like the big flakes, as big as you'd like, tiny flakes, then the food processor would be just as good. Oh yeah, definitely. So seaweed does have a lot of the B12 and the, what else did it have? I had my notes here somewhere, unless um, Dr. Bisevec or someone else that might know more. <laughs> a lot of omega-3, your B vitamins, and like I said, with, with, with the fact of having a vegan diet, you do lack a lot of B, B12s, and this is a really good um, addition to, to having that in your system. All right. 
so that's okay. That's enough. And then we're gonna add our salt in there. I usually add about, depending on how big the bowl, less or more salt. Um, I just sprinkle it a little bit and I as I go for the flavor because you don't want it to be too salty because once you go too salty, you can't go back. And of course, you can always add more salt as you serve yourself on your plate. And as we could see all the colors here, mixing up together. And this is like a great summer snack or dish, a dinner. And did I miss anything? I think I got all of that. And like I said, when we get it all prepared, so as we get together and we prepare, you can grab yourself a tostada, which is just a, a fried tortilla, and just add it on your... Okay. I wanted to ask, uh, yeah. if you wanted to use like soy meat instead of the cauliflower, would, would it be a little bit different or kind of taste the same? I haven't tried it, but I would assume that the texture might be a little too squishy. Yeah. Um, but if you'd like to experiment and try, I mean, we can always do that because I haven't tried soy meat actually. Soy yeah. Protein. But yeah, the textured soy protein, it, it depends. There's different textures. Or tofu. I actually was talking to a friend here and was saying that if you wanted to use tofu, um, we can soak the tofu in, um, what did he say it was? Like the seaweed or in the, the spirulina, the spirulina. Um, let that soak up the flavor and then you can just process the, or crumble up the tofu to your, to your liking and, and it'll, what, what was that that you had said? The, was it the spirulina for the tofu, Tony? No? Kambu? Yeah, kambu is a, uh, you know, it's a, the full leaf of, um, like, kelp. And oh, the kelp. That, yeah, you can boil it, and then you can, you know, blanch the cauliflower in that to absorb a little bit more of that, like, oceanic fish flavor and make it taste a little can bit more. Can you repeat that on the, the audio? Can you repeat that on the microphone? Okay, did you guys hear me, or do you need me to repeat that? Repeat. Oh, the audience. Okay, sorry. So um, you can get like kombu at a lot of like Japanese grocers. Uh, Mitsuwa is over in, is that Mount Prospect or Des Plaines? Uh, Mount Prospect. But it's a, a big Japanese grocer. But you can get a kombu leaf, which is a leaf from a kelp plant. And instead of being like processed down, it's different than the seaweed um, that you put in there. So you don't eat it. What you use is you actually turn it into a stock by boiling it. And then once you have that stock, you can use that stock to blanch your cauliflower like you did at the beginning. Yeah. And that'll absorb a little bit more of that flavor um, if you're trying to get it a little bit more uh, fish-like and oceanic. Yes. So there you go. Um, are there any more questions? I'm basically, this is what I've got. There's a microphone. <laughs> Some people are sensitive to cilantro, and I don't know why. Yeah. But you can leave that out. Could the, you substitute uh, parsley? Possibly. Um, parsley is not a bad substitute, actually. Um, I, don't, I don't know how much it will change the flavor, but it's very similar. And like I said, this recipe, it's to your liking. So whatever flavors you would enjoy, you can, you can add almost anything in there, I think, that would mix well. Parsley will make it sweeter? Yes. Okay. Okay, so parsley does have a slightly sweeter taste than cilantro. So. Sure, yeah, yeah. Like I said, any, any of those herbs is to your liking. So all of these flavors, salt and the lime, I really like sour things, so I add more lime um, to mine after I serve it. Um, and uh, yeah, the salt you can add afterwards as well. Any more questions? <laughs> I can't wait for you to try it. And like I said, if you come to the food festival, this is what I have. So feel free to come on by and, and buy some more. <laughs> all righty. Well, I guess if we are done, this is all I got. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay, while they're changing, I'm going to just mention a few things about 
oxalates, because uh, this is a very common question when it comes to cruciferous vegetables, uh, and there's a lot of confusion about this, because people often think the oxalates can cause kidney stones, and they can. Uh, and this is what I found in the literature. Can you see from there? This is a dead sheep that ate oxalate-rich food, but they were probably given some antibiotics. So oxalates are naturally found in the body. They're part of, called organic acids, and so we need them every single day. The problem is there is a, a bacteria called oxalobacter formigenes. And when you have a normal healthy microbiome, you digest this and process this without any problems, but because of the modern world where we have way too many antibiotics, we destroy this bacteria, and then, then the problem arises. It's somewhat similar story where we talked about heart, heart disease. Is cholesterol the problem or the damage on the arterial wall, right? So uh, if you want to stop eating oxalates, you have to stop eating nuts, legumes, fruit, grains, everything basically, right? So oxalates are everywhere. You just need to enrich your diet with probiotics, avoid antibiotics when they're not necessary, eat a lot of kefir. Kefir also increases this oxo oxo oxalobacter uh, formigenes, and uh, do not overdo of cruciferous vegetables. But you know what? Even if it's zero oxalate diet, body produces oxalates inside, internally. In other words, body always tries to be in equilibrium, so you're gonna make it no matter what. So do not be afraid of oxalates, just make sure your microbiome is intact. The other stuff she mentioned about the seaweeds, uh, women especially need uh, iodine, and women need iodine for ovaries, breasts, and thyroid, and that's why there's more often thyroid disorders with women where men need it only for thyroid. Do not overdo seaweeds, but seaweeds are a very healthy source of iodine. That's the comment, thanks. If you have any more questions, will they change? Uh, oh, okay. All right. Good, okay. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Angela, and I've got my co-chef, my husband, Tony, here with me. <laughs> All right, so today for the soup, we are going to be making a cauliflower and white bean soup. So the cauliflower is our cruciferous vegetable, which is the star of the show today, and we've already talked a lot about the health benefits of cruciferous vegetables, so won't repeat that. Um, but the other star of the show here is the white beans, and those, I think, provide two important benefits. They, a, a lot of times with a vegetarian or vegan diet, we have maybe a hard time getting all the protein that we need, so the white beans add a lot of protein to the soup to make it a little more uh, filling. And the beans also actually provide a creamy texture, so when you puree it, you can get a nice creamy texture without using dairy. So those are kind of our two stars of the show here is the cauliflower and the white beans. So what we've got here, I don't know if they can kind of see it, but we've got part of the way through already with the recipe that you see in your book. So what we started with, this is a double batch, so this is gonna be twice the amount that you see written in your, in your little booklet. So we started with two onions that we diced and we sauteed them until they were nice and soft, which took about five minutes. And then what we did is we added some minced garlic and then the uh, minced sage and thyme. So with that, you can change that up and use any herbs that you like. So I like the sage and thyme. It has a little bit more of a like holiday kind of feel, um, but you can change that up to whatever herbs you like. And depending on what you use, different herbs have different health benefits. So we've talked a little bit about cilantro and parsley, but all different herbs have different uh, health benefits for you. So again, we have the sage and thyme in here. And then with the onion and garlic, those are also a, you know, a very uh, classic start to many recipes, and those actually provide a lot of digestive health benefits and immune system benefits, so uh, not just the flavor, they have some health benefits too. So anyway, so we had our onion that we sauteed, we added our garlic and our herbs, and we cooked those for about a minute because the garlic cooks very, very fast and can burn very quickly, which is why we didn't add it at the beginning. So just added it at the end for a minute just to cook it but not burn it. 
And then we added in our vegetable broth. So again, because this is a double batch, I used two of those little four cup cartons of vegetable broth and added our cauliflower. So we, we didn't blanch it or anything, it was raw, and we just cut off the florets. So we added our broth, our cauliflower. Um, we did a little bit different from what's in your book, and I'll explain that in a second. So we added one can of beans and our salt and pepper. So what we did is we then brought this to a boil, and once it was boiling, we reduced the heat and let it simmer for about 20 minutes or so, you know, stirring it every so often just to make sure um, the cauliflower got a chance to cook nice, uh, nice and thoroughly and get all soft so that we can puree it. So our next step is to puree it, and I'll explain a little bit about why we didn't use both cans of beans right at the beginning. So this is, again, another way that you can customize it, depending on what type of texture you like. So if you like it to be completely smooth, completely creamy, you could add both cans of beans, because this is a double batch, you could add both cans of beans right at the beginning and puree the whole thing to be nice and smooth. What we did is we did half the beans in the soup to be pureed, and then after it's pureed, we'll add the second half of the beans just to add a little bit more texture with some of the whole beans. Um, but again, that's totally up to you in terms of how you like that texture, and even when you're pureeing it, if you like some of the chunks of cauliflower and onion, you don't have to puree it totally smoothly. It's, it's totally up to you kind of how you control that texture, the level of creaminess versus uh, kind of chunkiness there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and immerse and blend this. I don't think it's too loud. Um, yes. No? It's okay? Okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and puree this. So we are using an immersion blender, um, which makes things nice and easy because you can do it right in the pot. Um, and AV team tell us if it gets too loud and we need to stop. Um, it's okay? Okay. Perfect. Okay. So... Uh, obviously, we're using an immersion blender, but if you don't have one, you could also use your regular blender. But the thing to be careful with there is you always want to be very careful when you're blending hot liquids because they can expand a lot and splatter and can kind of burn. So what I do when I use um, like a big blender to puree something like this is pretty much all blenders have kind of that little cap at the top of the lid. So I'll take that off and just kind of loosely cover it with a kitchen towel. And that helps uh, kind of contain the, any splatters, but let the steam escape. So that's how I do that. And you always want to make sure it's half or less full in the blender if you're pureeing hot liquids. And because this is two batches of soup, we would probably have to do two or three batches in the blender. Um, and again, that could be where you can play with the texture. Maybe you only puree half of it in the blender um, if you like some of the texture. And we can finish that in a, in a bit. Um, if, um, okay, so we have our soup pureed. And again, just because of how we did it with the, uh, with the beans, we're gonna add in our second can of beans now, just so there's, again, a little bit more texture. But again, totally up to you how you like that. And we're just going to give it a stir. And that is our soup, really nice and simple. And we are also going to make a, my favorite part is the crouton topping. So what we have already prepared here. We oh, we have a question. Yeah. Yeah, that was just a textural. So the question was, why are we not blending all of the beans into the soup? And the answer is just because of textural preference on our part. So you could blend all the beans. You could blend none of them. We did half. So just depending on what you like, if you like it to be nice and smooth versus chunky. So um, totally up to you there. You can customize that however you like. Uh, any other questions on the soup or Edgar? Yeah, so if you wanted it to be a little creamier, you could add both cans of beans right at the beginning, and that'll help it be a little creamier because of the starches and, and that kind of thing. You could also play around with um, you know, dairy substitutes. They do make like vegan heavy creams, which are usually, uh, I think, pea-based. Pea um, you could use coconut milk if you like that flavor. Um, you, so you could kind of play around with some of that too, depending on uh, your preferences there. Mm -hmm. And that will just make it thicker. Thicker, and yeah. As well. so. Yep. 
All righty. So what we did with our croutons, we started with a whole wheat sandwich bread um, as an easy option. Again, you can customize that however you like. You can use any type of bread. It just depends if you're using maybe a denser bread. It might need a little more cooking time. But So what we did here was we had our, uh, our sandwich bread that we cut into nice little cubes, uh, nice and small, and we just baked them on a baking sheet in a single layer at 400 degrees for 10 minutes, and they came out, you can hear, nice and crispy and golden. Um, I think fresh croutons are one of the best things, so these are really yummy. So now that they are out of the oven and nice and baked, we're gonna season them. So I've got a little bit of olive oil here that I'll drizzle them with. And then I've got the rest of the sage and the rest of the thyme. And again, you could change that up depending on what herbs you like or seasonings. And I'm just gonna toss these, and that's all there is to it. And then you have fresh homemade croutons. So when you serve the soup, what we would recommend is you serve the soup with the croutons, and if you like, you can drizzle it with a little extra olive oil, some extra herbs, again, depending on your preference. But that's all there is to it. So any other questions? No? Good. Very good, very good. One more thing. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me? All right, so this is a little bit of a change of what I'm used to. I'm usually in the back, but because of the nature of this dish, uh, and it's very um, prominent in my culture, uh, I decided to present today. So today we're going to be learning how to create pancit, a uh, vegan pancit. Now, pancit, as you all know, uh, comes from the Philippines, but it's very difficult for people who are plant-based or, or vegan to enjoy these recipes because most restaurants that are Filipino-based, uh, they have 
these dishes with a lot of meat, whether it's pork, chicken, shrimp. Shrimp is really used a lot in pancit, um, and so it's very useful when it comes to creating um, vegan Filipino cuisine to uh, adopt these recipes into your own repertoire because uh, you will not be able to find vegan pancit at a Filipino restaurant unless uh, there's something that I don't know. So, um, so we're going to get uh, started with just an overview of our ingredients. Uh, there's nothing f too fancy here. There might be a, something that uh, one or two items that you might have a question of where to buy that. But um, we have our rice noodles. These rice noodles you can purchase at any Asian food uh, marketplace, the Asian section of, the, uh, of Walmart or your basic grocery store also tends to have those. Uh, we will need vegetable broth. Uh, any vegetable broth will do. Uh, today we're using an organic vegetable broth. Uh, Bonafide is our brand, but it doesn't need to be that specific brand. Um, and then we have our onion and garlic powder. The reason why we use powder versus the specific, uh, the actual vegetable, um, obviously because it's in spice form, uh, powder form, but it also is more concentrated, so you get more health benefits from that as opposed to just chopping the uh, garlic um, and the onion. So um, moving on, we have black pepper, garlic salt. You're gonna, we tend, my family tends to like our dishes a little bit on the salty side, so we tend to add more of these, but when you're making it at home, you can adjust to your palate. Um, soy sauce, um, we prefer to use low sodium soy sauce. It's much healthier. Uh, if you're watching your salt intake, but um, regular or low sodium is perfectly fine. The reason why we use soy sauce is uh, two-faceted, double-faceted. First, obviously the taste, but second, to give our noodles color, and it's more appealing and appetizing that way. Otherwise, you have these uh, clear, transparent noodles, much more appetizing once it's brown with the soy sauce. Um, we also are going to use mushroom seasoning. Um, now, if you're going to ask specifics about where to get uh, some of these other items, we'll say that for the end, my mom is the expert on the shopping aspect, um, so we can ask those questions if you're tr having trouble finding these, um, or if you've never seen these items at the store. Uh, avocado oil, cabbage, which is our uh, cruciferous focus, uh, matchstick carrots, celery, button mushrooms, and then the vegan soy slices. So our noodles is the first thing we're going to do. Our recipe has three main components. The noodles, the stir fry, and then the broth. And the broth is essential because it gives everything flavor. But we want to be efficient with our time. So. Um, Soak the noodles for 10 minutes in lukewarm water. And after that, you will cut the noodles in half so that you are not slurping your noodles like uh, was it Lady in the Tramp from Disney. Um, so it's easy to eat and it's more manageable. So um, you're going to cut that in half. We have pre-soaked this ahead of time, so we, we're not going to demonstrate that here. And then we move on to the stir fry. So with, with the stir fry, um, I'm going to have my frying pan here. And then we'll add our olive oil. So that avocado oil, sorry. We use avocado oil because apparently frying olive oil at high temperatures, there's some sort of toxicity release. I'm not too familiar with that, but we use avocado oil for frying and then olive oil for everything else. So we'll let that heat up, and then um, uh, we will add our vegan soy slices once that starts to get he heated up. Vegan soy slices, uh, you can purchase them at any health food store. There's lots of different options for your protein, um, but for this recipe we use uh, vegan soy slices. And then we will add that here, stir it up a little. And then we'll add our garlic, salt, and pepper to taste. Again, we like it on the salty side for our family, but 
to each their own pepper. All right, and then we'll saute that until the soy slices begin to turn a dark brown or light brown coloration. And um, then we'll add the sliced celery and cabbage uh, after that, and then we'll cover it, let it sit for two minutes, uh, then remove it from the stove. And then the vegetables will continue to cook even when the stove is off. And we'll move on to our next um, component of the dish. So while that's warming up, because I think this uh, hot plate is taking a little bit longer than expected, but the pancit is already made, so if you're worried about the time it takes to make this, it's already made for you guys. This is just for practical demonstration. So with our broth preparation, we'll need uh, a nice pot here, and then we'll add two cups of our broth. And then we'll add our onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper, and then the mushroom seasoning. Now, we're not using mushroom seasoning for this demonstration. That's purely optional, but um, we tend to like it at home. And then um, once it starts to boil, we'll add our noodles and we'll let it um, boil for about eight minutes or so, then we'll then add the carrots and the mushrooms. Well, while we're waiting for things to heat up, we can talk a little bit about the cultural um, considerations of pancit. Uh, pancit, we mentioned it's from the Philippines, but it actually has historical roots in the Chinese culture. And over the centuries, it has evolved uh, to combine both Filipino ingredients with Chinese cooking techniques. So when you go to uh, your uh, a local Asian restaurant, you'll see noodle dishes that look very similar, but it's unique to that country. The Philippines has adopted their own noodle dish. Um, culturally, um, it's a dish that you'll see at every Filipino gathering. Um, you may not be able to eat it, like my, myself, but um, it is a staple food for their diet. And so many people, when we bring this to church potluck, everyone's so amazed about it. But for me, I'm like, pancit again? It's just, why is everyone so obsessed with pancit? It's, it's, it's just, we're so tired of it, but we'll, you guys love it, so we'll make it for you. Um, and so... The ingredients are not too complicated. We know the health benefits of carrots, the beta carotene with our skin and our eyes. We also know that uh, all of these vegetables add fiber. Fiber is good, especially when uh, people, even at a young age, are dealing with GI issues. So uh, good to have fiber. Uh, the celery, we know celery is rich in antioxidants. Um, and so that's uh, one added benefit. And then... So we're mixing, we're mixing. I forgot that I'm talking and also cooking at the same time. Um, and then the mushrooms. Mushrooms are good with uh, B vitamins. It also gives that meaty texture to all of our, the whole dish as, um, as a whole. And then, so now I'm going to add the cabbage and then the celery. to our stir fry. And then let me know when we're at the five minute mark. David, thank you.
white sauce. So with this quantity, um, you'll probably be able to serve five individuals. And as we mix the noodles, we start to see that the color begins to turn nice and dark and browned and looks more appetizing as we go on. All right. Um, so are there any questions with regards to how we assemble pancit? Because the last step is pretty straightforward. We mix it and we um, serve it. The soy slices? Um, I. I believe this particular one is frozen. Uh, oh, dehydrated, sorry. We'll get a mic. The soy slices is optional. If you want that midi texture in your pancit, you can put it, but otherwise, it's actually a dehydrated form of, uh, it's, it's called um, soy vegan slices. You can buy it in all, uh, in. Um, Asian store, you can buy it in H Mart. Uh, there's also, if you're familiar with the vegetarian store, Seventh Day Adventist vegetarian store in uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Apple Valley. Apple Valley. If you're familiar with Apple Valley, they have it there. And with this kind of dish, uh, you can put any meat substitute that you want. It's actually very friendly because you use the broth; it absorbs the flavor from the broth. Uh, when you are ready to serve, please serve it as soon as possible because the high water content of the noodles um, makes it more prone to grow bacteria at an accelerated rate. So even if, if you bring pancit to a party and it's like five hours has been sitting out, test it first before you continue to serve it because if it starts to taste funky, um, we don't want anyone to have food poisoning. So. Um, it's be as easy it is, as it is to assemble, it's easy to spoil, um, so just make sure you serve it right away. Uh, my husband uh, fries tofu, mm -hmm. uh, he squeezes it out and uh, fries it in his Chinese food mixture. Um, I, I suppose you could add that to your pancit, right? Tofu? Tofu, yes. Uh, just as my mother said, we can uh, interchange the uh, very s the, the soy um, pieces here with uh, any other meat substitute like tofu, or you can add tofu on top of the, the soy slices. So um, it's really a flexible, it's a flexible dish altogether because you'll go to different regions of the Philippines um, we have so many dialects, just a small country with hundreds of dialects, just the same hundreds of different variations of the same recipe. Um, and so... You could probably also use tempa if you wanted to. Ooh. Tempa? It's another story. Oh. Okay, and then we're ready to mix. And then, there you go. So this sort of concludes our demonstration portion of our cooking class. Um, and so for our online audiences, 
this is the sad part because you don't get to partake of the food here. That's why it's advantageous to come in person, right? So um, we will be posting the recipes uh, on our YouTube description for this particular video. Uh, we haven't released it just yet, um, but everyone else here has the recipes. We do want to mention that there is an upcoming event coming in September. Um, if we could change the slide to our um, announcements. So in September, I believe 24 to 29, we have Barbara O'Neill coming um, for and she'll be presenting Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 7 p.m., Saturday at 11 and 2 p.m., and then a final presentation on, at 10 a.m. And she is a very well-known uh, speaker, a uh, lifestyle coach uh, that comes from Australia. She has lots of uh, information about health, various topics. The topic list is... Uh, in the middle of being finalized, but we did reserve her, we did book her. It's very difficult to book with her, uh, book with her but uh, we did have her for September, so uh, invite your family and friends. We'll be having those presentations nightly, with the exception of Saturday and Sunday. Uh, and more information will be released uh, as the months come by. Are the presentations going to be on the same topic, or is each presentation different? Every presentation will address a specific... Um, chronic disease or um, health topic. So it's not a series that are all connected together, but various um, health issues that, like diabetes, there's one specifically for cardiovascular disease, there's one specific about sleep, and uh, lots of variety. So, um, and we'll give that final topic list once uh, we have that ready, so. We just wanted to give you the date because uh, it is well in advance, but you want to block that whole week if you're really uh, excited to hear what she has to say. So uh, we'd like to thank you for coming. Uh, we appreciate uh, sharing this moment with us and to partake of delicious food. We're going to now transition. We'll end our live stream, uh, and then we'll set up tables for you to eat. We, we, we kindly ask for your patience about for five five to seven minutes as we set up the, the tables for your dining experience. And um, just thank you so much for um, your concern of your health because a lot of times we neglect that and it leads to a plethora of problems later on. So um, thank you for being health conscious and, hope, conscious and hopefully you can share that with your friends and family.